Excellent. So in, in the in the last video, we started moving into kind of blockchain. So it'd be really good um, to find out kind of how blockchain fits into the, the CUDA model. Yeah, sure. Um, so, you know, blo blockchain is changing a huge number of industries, um, anything from tracking uh, devices, immutability, um, provability as well um, of data, but also distributed uh, finance known as DeFi or decentralized finance. And we're kind of now, I would say in 2020, starting to see the impact of those and actually whole new industries coming up um, because of the decentralization of it and in the opening up of new possibilities. So what we can do with our uh, network and our, our global network is be able to support blockchain and enable blockchain to do more than it can do today. Um, which is essentially what we've been working towards is building this large distributed mm -hmm. compute network um, that can support traditional compute industries, but also can support blockchain industries and kind of open up the floodgates for new possibilities. So on our uh, compute network, um, by adding kudos to that network, it enables anyone, any language, any currency to buy and sell compute capacity between each other. So we create a, a large global decentralized network where everyone can trade their computing between each other, um, which enables anyone down to a mobile phone to generate revenue off those devices, um, but also hugely reduces the cost of compute. Okay. Um, and what you've seen with some of the other uh, projects is you may have issues with things like data sovereignty. Um, you need to keep your information within a certain distance. So we built into our network that you can keep that data inside a certain country or you can keep it within a certain latency or actually I need to run it within a certain security environment. So all of these things are possible. So you get kind of all the benefits of the cloud, but with greater distribution and lower costs. So, um, so, so you're kind of bridging that blockchain to traditional cloud world? Yeah, so that I, I suppose that is our application of more traditional cloud um, and how we managed to make that scale. And then from the uh, blockchain, like purely blockchain perspective, what we see is uh, the issues of a lot of blockchains at the moment. Um, for one thing, uh, immutability is a good thing, but it also limits what you can do. So when you create a smart contract, you can't actually usually uh, connect directly to information from the outside world. Um, and depending on the blockchain, you know, they may not be Turing complete blockchains, in which case it limits what you can do with that data as well mm -hmm. um, and limits the functionality. So we have our uh, network um, and we have our validators as well. So the validators are well known staking validators. Mm -hmm. um, and what that enables uh, anyone that's writing smart contracts. Uh, so it's a multi-chain platform as well. So it, you could be building on Algorand, you could be building on Ethereum. Um, and if you need to uh, lower your costs or achieve more from the computing perspective, uh, or actually connect data. So if you're trying to get DeFi feeds, data feeds, um, connecting to payment platforms like PayPal, then you need a network like ours. You need a, a network Oracle, so a compute Oracle that you can then connect into. So we're, we're, we're using the Kudos network to uh, kind of create a new global network that everyone can share capacity, but then also that network's used to support blockchains um, and create a decentralized blockchain. So the, the issue with uh, blockchain is if you just try to connect onto Amazon or Google, you're going straight back to a centralized provider, yes. which is kind of defies the whole point of it in the first place. Absolutely. So there is, and that's, that's a great point. I mean, there is, uh, a lot of people out there that are pure decentralization uh, for the you know for the f philosophy that's behind that um, uh, and that has its uh, lots of pros it also has a few cons and and the same for centralization right there's the there are uh, businesses institutions out there where that maybe that that paradigm shift in mentality hasn't moved across yet and they see the scalability um, you know better on a on a centralized platform for example or maybe the security or however they they view that but there's, there's got to be that shift so what, what you're saying is that the kudo platform is is in effect a hybrid and the way that it's being created as a hybrid is that you have this layer two oracle the kudos network um, that that connects the two halves so it's connecting the decentralized world to Distributed, but you know, in in essence, a, a centralized computing platform. Um, but because it's not 
uh, human governed in the middle is smart contracts and validators. That's where it becomes a kind of ideal hybrid model that will satisfy both markets. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And because it's hybrid, it means that it works for people that are work, uh, building smart contracts and it, it you know, make, makes it possible to do more than they can at the moment or more efficiently. But also, you know, as an example, we're working with projects like uh, Noia Network that need a global backbone capacity. So because they're a blockchain project themselves, have their own token, you know, we, we can then provide that all natively across the network. So as well as supporting blockchains uh, themselves, uh, we also support other projects and enable them to do the scale. So we've, we've done the hard work of building that global network. Now other people can build on top of it and take advantage of it. Building a foundation and then others can build the house on top. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And then if you look at it from the data oracle side of things or the computer oracle, we have the validator nodes, we have uh, the way to do um, consensus across those nodes. So it enables anyone to build their own data services as well. So they can take advantage of our underlying layer and then provide their own data oracle services to other blockchains. So we've kind of built the building blocks underneath and then they can run their applications on Very top smart. of it. Very smart. And how, how do you see this evolving in the future? Um, so, you know, uh, we're launching initially with two, two blockchains, um, but it's a multi-chain platform. So we want to provide these um, Oracle services to uh, basically the blockchains that it's going to take most advantage of. So it will be expanding into other blockchains over the coming months. And then uh, a lot of growth on the supply side. So from that perspective, then we are um, working with these white label partners that are going to give us global scale that we're already on, you know, tens of thousands of nodes with hundreds of thousands of whatever, well, 100,000 installations. Um, but with, with these launches, that actually gives us millions of nodes. So it, it gives us a solid global infrastructure. So the idea is that we can then support huge amounts of compute um, using the network, but also we can support you know any of the scalability demands that you've got from all of these different scalable blockchains. But we're m removing ourselves from the centralization of it, mm -hmm. so you could choose to run in any of these countries across multiple nodes. So um, we're also partnering with large global backbone providers. Um, so the Hub Group's a good example where we're working with them. Um, they've got a fantastic global network. Um, and we're working with them to provide a, you know, a big global backbone capacity uh, using our nodes across it. And then we're doing the same with data center providers and service providers. Fantastic, okay. And um, I, I can see how much the project has evolved, has developed, the, the, the user numbers come in that we've gone over in, in, in past videos. So maybe, and we've just talked you know, quite a lot about what's coming up and what's on the future roadmap as well. So, so maybe in the next video, we can talk a little bit about what, what, what's, what's the team actually working on now uh, where the project is is now yeah. and um, dig a little bit deeper into that. Okay, great.